Question 1 to 8, bleak code, longest consecutive sequence. So given an unsorted array of integer nums, return the length of the longest consecutive element sequence. You must write an algorithm that runs in on time. So this question is asking for the longest consecutive sequence. So in example 1, we have the nums array 10, 4, 200, 1, 3, and 2, and the output is 4. So the longest consecutive sequence is 4, because we have 1 here, followed by 2, 3, and 4. And then in example 2, we have this nums array here, and the output is 9, because we can go from 0 to 8, which equals 9. Now, now if you see here, we've got two zeros in this array, so we need to account for that. So we need to create an algorithm that has linear time complexity, and we also need to make sure that we remove duplicates from this. So we can utilize a set data structure, which has O1 lookup, so it's optimized for looking up values. So the set will equal, which has removed the last value. So remember, a set only has unique values, so we've removed any duplications, so that will not be accounted for in our final output. So that's the first issue solved. Now we need to look at this and work out how to find a consecutive sequence with only linear time complexity. And the best way to do that is to just break the problem down. So we have one, two, three, four. We have 100 and we have 200. So we have three different sequences. This one has a total of four values. This one has a total of one and this one has a total of one. Now, how can we work out how to start a sequence when looping through this set. Well, one thing that all three of these sequences have in common is that they don't have a value to the left of it. So we can use that in our solution. So if set doesn't have nums at i, we can carry out a loop that would check to see whether the set has nums plus one. Okay, so looping through this, we have 100. Is 99 within the set? No, it's not. So we can start a count. So we have 100. Do we have anything following it? No. So the total is one. We move over to four. Is three within the set? Yes, it is. So we carry on. We move to 200. Is 199 in the set? No. So this is a start of a new sequence. So 200. Is there a value following this? So it was 201 within the set? No. So we can say that the current streak for that, or the final streak for that one is one. Now we move on to one. Is zero within this set? No. So this becomes the start of a new sequence. Is two within the set? Yes, it is. So we can add two onto that. Is three within the set? Yes, it is. We can add that there. Is four within the set? Yes, it is. Is five within the set? No. Nope. So we can say that the total of that sequence is four, and then we just return this value. So before we look at the time complexity on this one, it'd be good to jump in and write out the solution to this and then discuss that. Okay, so let's code this out. Let's create the set. Let's initialize it with nums. Let's initialize a streak. And then let's loop through that set. So let num of set. And we need to check if the set has num minus one. So the previous number. If it does, then we can continue because that's not the start of a new sequence. Otherwise, let's create current streak and set it to one because we have found the start of a sequence. Then let's create a while loop. So while set has num plus one, so our set has the next number. We increment current streak and we also increment the number. Then once we exit this while loop, we can update streak to equal math.max compared with current streak. And then we can return streak. Okay, so let's start off this loop. So we check at zero if the previous value is in the set. It isn't. So we start the while loop. There's no other value, so we move along. Two doesn't have the previous value, so we start the while loop. Four is the same, we start the while loop. And six is the same, we start the while loop. Now, if you think about it, if the time complexity was O n squared, we'd loop through each value in the set for every while loop. But in this example, we have only looped through one of the values with each while loop. So that is O of n plus n, which equates to O of n. Let's take one more example. So we have the set. We check to see if 99 is in the set. It's not, so we start the while loop. 101 is not there, so we move along. 4 is 3 within the set. Yes, it is, so we move along. 200 is 199 in the set. No, it's not, so that starts the while loop. 201 is not in the set, so we move along to 1. 
is zero in the set? No, so we can start another while loop. Is two in the set? Yes, it is. Three is in the set and four is in the set. So in this case, we started the while loop three times. But as you can see with each iteration, this one only checked one value. This one only checked one value. This one checked four values. And that equates to the set, right? Because we have one plus one plus four, which is six. And the set contains six values. So again, it's going to be on plus m, which equates to on. So let's check to see if that's worked. Okay, so it's been accepted. Let's submit it. And there you have it.